da 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 No, not again, not again, no, 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 please! Oh! Oh! Ah! Yep, right behind you, pal. And in my heart as a kid, I'm like, I can't wait for a couple years from now when Resident Evil 2 remake comes out. <laughs> Maybe we should have talked about Fallout. Nah, nobody cares about Fallout. What the? Oh, what does he want? Uh, nah. God, we make a good pair. Me, the sex appeal, the intellectual mind, and then. Him. I'm gonna have to talk to him about that bald spot too. It's really starting to. Oh! Speak of the devil. What? Dex, they're everywhere! I need your help! Kinda doing something right now. Oh my god, fine! God. Did that help? Aaron? Hey guys, welcome back to Ramblers. We're super excited to have you here. And this week we are talking about, well, something that uh, came up during our E3 discussion. That's right. We're talking about the Battle Royale kind of as a genre in general. Mm -hmm. um, I know there were some comments surrounding it. Well, comments that have originated um, slowly over time and then sort of got renewed during E3. And that is sort of, do you think there are too many Battle Royales right now? Right. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that, but let's let's just clarify real quick. Um, obviously, we're talking about Battle Royale. We're talking about games like uh, PUBG. Uh, Player un Player Unknown's Battleground, for those of you who are not familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, Fortnite, really popular one. Obviously, yeah. H1Z1 kind of started them all. Uh, Hunt, which actually is still a Battle Royale. And my personal favorite, Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. yeah I mean, technically, sure. technically, right? I'm yeah, like... Smash Brothers, absolutely. <laughs> um. No, uh, we are definitely talking about in this genre of the first-person shooters or third-person shooters in some cases. Um, in most cases. In most cases, third-person shooters, but the, the one in 100s. Right. Um, so, really, I guess this just goes on to your opinion is your opinion. I mean, everybody kind of feels um, there's, there's always a feel in the market, right? Is there mm -hmm. too much of this, too little of that? Um, personally, I want to hear what you have to say. I got my own well, feelings on this, but so let's, let's. I mean, let's talk about it, right. So here's the thing with with like uh, a battle royale. It is, as, as we mentioned right now, it is it is pretty much a standalone genre. Right. It absolutely. Is. Um. And for me, you know, the game it varies. My personal feelings on battle royales come along with varying depending on which game it is. For example, I enjoy PUBG. I enjoy H1Z1. I need to get a PC so I can play Hunt because that looks amazing. Yes, it does. I hate Fortnite. I hate. Fortnite. Have you actually played a game of Fortnite? No. Now, now, now you see that? <laughs> um, I was kind of, I being guilty, I was in that crowd of, th of saying, why is Fortnite so popular? It looks really dumb. And it didn't really look dumb. I think there's sort of a thing as gamers where if you were not part of the initial bandwagon, you feel like you have to hate the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. um, I still haven't played Final Fantasy VII to this date because of that. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. What? Right? Yeah, I know. Right? I Mind blown. Seen, I don't know if we could do this ha anymore. I haven't, haven't, haven't seen The Matrix either. I totally live under a rock. Um, so I, I downloaded and I played some Fortnite. I gotta tell you, it's it's really fun. It's great. 
Um, personally... So here's my thing with Fortnite. Okay. I, it's, it's not the graphics. Um, which are which, beautiful. Which, I think they're cartoony. Uh, which is beautiful. Okay, fine. Fine, Mike. Um, but I, I don't like the building mechanic. Plain okay. and simple, that's it. That is what drives me away, is the building mechanic. I do not like the idea of of building your way up into the sky and firing down and breaking things down and uh, collecting resources. No. I, I like my tactical realism first-person shooters, right? It's, it's a reason I'm a huge fan of Siege. Yeah. You get one life to live. Um, it's all about your tactical infiltration or your tactical defense. That's the kind of stuff I enjoy. And while, yes, I know the building mechanic adds a tactical aspect to it, it's just not for me. Well, it's just for me, it almost, I think it's honestly... And it's what makes me kind of feel old when I look at this game, is it just feel like there's way too much going on, and I'm just like, nope, I'm good. See, I'm good I, without that piece of technology. Given what you've played, though, and what we've played, it, there's actually a lot of it that's simplified down. I think that's actually a good way to start, which is, really, what are these battle royales about? I know we're mm -hmm. really talking about Fortnite, and unfortunately, unfortunately, we're talking about battle royales, but with my own experience, obviously, I'll be bleeding into Fortnite the most. But really, it, it's a genre that didn't sound really fun to me at all. In fact, mm -hmm. if you described it to me, it um, sounded kind of dumb. But actually doing it, I, I, there's it's gotten so big because there's a lot of potential in it. Well, I, yeah. mean, I mean, everybody loves, no matter no matter how tactical your game is, no matter how realistic it is, there's always somebody who plays Siege, and I, and I don't really know much about Siege, so I'm probably going to say something that already exists. But there's always that one guy who's like, oh, this is cool, but isn't it just like uh, everybody just kills each other mode? It's popular. You know, right, the team deathmatch. Or even just free-for-all deathmatch. Mm -hmm. People are just like, I don't even want to be in a team. Can I just run around and shotgun people? Um, not really my big thing, but the Battle Royale, first off, the scope is just really cool, right? 100 players mosh pitting right into the middle of a battleground. One of you is going to be the winner. Right. And I think, you know, when I think about it, like, and again, size isn't what draws me away. Because size is what drew me into the Battlefield games. Those 64 on 64 maps. Drew me right in sure. for the con conquest, right? I think it was the conquest maps. So you're not um, intimidated by size? I'm not. I'm not. I'm very happy with where I stand, and I am completely, completely, uh, completely believe in myself. You're a very it's secure It's the motion gamer. of the ocean. Very secure gamer over here. Motion of the ocean. I'm talking. We're talking about thumb movements and how you play a game, of course. Of course. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I, it's for me. You know, it, that always drew me in. The 1v100, though, however, I'm, I agree to a little bit. I think initially I look at that and I'm like, oh, I am not interested in me versus 99 other people. Sure. Um, again, I'm very tactical. I'm very stealthy. And I know everything I say, people are like, well, that's the reason you love this game. Is I'm very tactical and stealthy and patient and time-based. And 1v100, I would just, I don't know. I think I, you get slaughtered, me, but again, is what you do, because that's what you do your first time. I mean, I've never, you know, my first game of Fortnite, what did I do? I just said, let's just have fun with this. Skydive right in the busiest area, just just find the nearest thing that looks like a gun and shoot at people. <laughs> and of course I got demolished. But the thing is... <laughs> Picked up a nail gun. <laughs> um, it's something that uh, Tanner touched on a while ago, and he said, there is an element of luck to it. Mm -hmm. You and who actually is the best shooter player in the... I'm, I'm sorry to wipe my eyes, it's very hot out here. Um... You and we thought this through. You and who is actually the best shooter player in the game could land right next to each other. You could be the first one getting a gun and kill him and take out the, the best of the skill pool right then and there. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. Something that I think people are grabbing onto. We will bemoan this concept endlessly, but it really is, unfortunately, and I really hate to admit this, healthy for gaming, and that is a, a bit of a luck element, a bit of a chaos element. Mm -hmm. Take a look at Hearthstone. Now, Hearthstone's not doing as ridiculously well as some people would like you to think it is, but it's still successful. It still maintains the ability to not die mm -hmm. as far as uh, online card games go, which other than Magic the Gathering having a Magic Online, online card games are not exactly a humongous, bustling enterprise. Right. However, Hearthstone really nailed the fact that when you have these games, you can, you can do crazy things. A card game that's all digital... You can have luck factors. You can play a card, and it'll say, I'm going to blast one of the ten creatures that's on the table. Uh, and it'll figure out how. Things that you you could do, Which I is, guess... I mean, in, I know, in, granted, that's more of a and d based element, right? That's that's a random matrix generator at that point, like a dice roll. I don't think Fortnite necessarily falls in that concept, but I get where you're going. No, but but there are similar concepts. Uh, the loot you find is going to be randomized. Where you find a right. gun is going to be randomized. What if you're the best player in the game, and you've looted ten houses, and you found nothing but a, but a green pistol? 
What if somebody else found a, an orange uh, sniper rifle? And see, that kind of stuff right there, that's what I call evil game masters. Well, e Because they exist, Matt Quigg. They exist. And so, again, we could bemoan the idea of um, skill in any way, shape, or form being trumped by a little bit of luck. Mm -hmm. But that's really healthy because something we have to admit, and, and trust me, you admit it. You've, you've said this to people any game that all chat exists. Most gamers are bad. Like, let, let, let's be real. <laughs> right. Most people are bad at games. We love playing games. Doesn't mean we're good at them. So I really think the, um, and, and granted, there are, in a lot of these games, there's there's your squad mode. I know you've been yelling at the screen right now. They're not all one, uh, 100 free-for-alls. Right. I know that there are squads of four or five. There are two, there are 50 teams of two. Um, the point being, though, to drop in and have that many people, I mean, people are going to die to random stuff. Mm. Some, first off, somebody's got to be the first one dead, and I'd hate to be that guy. Has not been me yet, and I'm no good at these games. <laughs> so, you know, there's there's a big luck element to a lot of that, but that's the chaos. It's really healthy. Mm -hmm. When you just drop a big mosh pit of people down and say, have at it, people who aren't very good at games are going to get a kill or two, or at the very least, not be the first one dead. Right. And they'll be able to say, hey, look, we finished in 12th place. Yeah, that's because you... you Played for 20 minutes and he didn't encounter anybody because you went to the opposite side of the map. As and, soon as you found a player, he killed you. And they but, hid in a bush. Or, or, or he hid in a bush, you know? <laughs> Which is, you know, that's a fun mechanic of uh, Fortnite. You should, really should try it. It's. Uh, how... I mean, sorry, that moment right there, just like hiding in a bush, always makes me think of, um, of calling someone out for camping. What? It is a legitimate strategy. It cracks me up to see. I, bush montages. Um, yeah, right. I, I, I laughed through that one too. Of, of Fortnite, <laughs> crack me up. They really do. It's hysterical, and that, and that goes back into the um, nobody who takes a, a video game seriously, like nobody competing for a prize pool at the top of Counter Strike. Uh, you know, go is ever gonna, you know, hiding find in hiding in a bush in Fortnite to be a legitimate gaming experience. But for it's trolls probably, like me, it's hysterical. That's probably how they all play. Like on their time off after they get done with the tournaments, they go play Fortnite and they just hide in a bush and chill out. So. The sentiment, however, that the market is now flooded with Battle Royales, um, A, I don't really believe... I mean, how do you feel about that? Okay, so this is kind of going to actually lead me into the future of okay. Battle Royales as well, um, and where I kind of see this going. Because I think there's only... I, I, again, it is a standalone right now with Fortnite, H1Z1, yeah. PUBG... Um, Hunt. Hunt, Super Smash... Uh, a couple more uh, revealed at E3. Yes, but okay, so that's what I'm talking about, though, is, well, okay, there is one. There's one that's coming out on PC that's a standalone, right. which is literally a PUBG ripoff, which makes me very sad that they couldn't bother to do something extra with it. Um, but then you have the announcement of these of the modes falling into Call of Duty and the new Battlefield Five, right? And that takes me as to where I see this. Plain and simple, how I see Battle Royale is I see it as a format. I don't see it as a game genre that's going to be lucrative for forever, right? Okay. It's not like an FPS. Because even when we talk about FPSs, right, and you think of Call of Duty, while, yes, it feels like the same thing, they do make small changes to it every single time. Sure. Um, and I think that's what you're going to see, is basically these games have come out, like Epic Gaming and stuff, and prove, look, Battle Royale works, and these other games said, you know what? They do. Let's start including these things. And I think that's where we're going to see this transition, is we're going to see the transition where your AAA titles are going to acknowledge it, say, we don't obviously don't want to get left behind. They're going to absorb it, and they're going to start turning it into modes. Right. So suddenly you're going to have your Conquest mode in Battlefield Five, along with your Battle Royale mode, along with your Team Deathmatch, because people wanted that, along with your Capture Points. Same with Call of Duty. You're going to see all of your normal game modes, plus a Battle Royale mode. Um, and I think that's going to be the future of, of battle of the battle royale system. Is I think we're going to start seeing the melding of it into other games as specific modes. I think the um, indie studios are still going to maintain battle royales as standalones, and I think they they perfectly can. But if a AAA title came out like Call of Duty and they said, "Oh, and multiplayer is only battle royale," let's be honest, we'd be we'd be pissed. We'd be well, livid. We would because that's not why you bought Call of Duty. Um, which actually kind of gets Wait, into a good point. You which, said... Which you know you didn't buy it for the story, either. <laughs> Modern Warfare 2 was okay, the best story I, mode in any game. That was a really good my mind. campaign. All right. Um, I'm not serious, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, but you brought up a good point, which is the bleeding off. I really want to get into my point about whether or not they're flooded, but I want to piggyback off yours before I forget it, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, 
bleeding in as a mode is something I really don't want to see. I think that actually becomes indicative of what players are saying, which is that it becomes a flooded market. Because with Call of Duty's huge success in the first-person shooter market, all these games that really didn't need a multiplayer mode, a competitive multiplayer mode, started shoehorning these little competitive multiplayer modes mm-hmm. in. Bioshock 2 did not need well, a oh, multiplayer mode whatsoever in it. Uncharted. Well, I guess a lot of people like the Uncharted. I didn't think it needed a multiplayer mode. But, I mean, I get what you're saying, right? But multiplayer, I think that's also kind of because multiplayer plain and simple is the future. That is that is where all games are going, unfortunately. And we talked about that with God of War, right? The narrative... Single-player-based games are becoming more and more non-existent. Well, that goes into what I want to say is that there is a place for different experiences, but the world, everything around you is a business, and mm-hmm. business trends, and people will go towards that business and gravitate towards it. Think about uh, even platformers. Super Mario Brothers, the most famous platformer, in my opinion, ever. Don't try to disagree. You're just going to sound like a hipster. Um Sonic like the Hedgehog. Yeah, it was high speed. Add a few different things, but it's a platformer. Uh, P- Crash Bandicoot, a platformer with different elements. Uh, when first person shooters started to take off, you started to see shooters everywhere. Uh, think about things like uh, I want to do others examples, but really I'm going to highlight the biggest one on my head is MOBAs. Yes, I know that um, Def- Defense of the Ancients. I was always heard it called as Den of the Ancients, but Defense of the Ancients, Dota. Yes, I know it's where it originated from. You're going to have to accept. League of Legends is what popularized MOBAs. Mm -hmm. And once they did, literally everyone had a MOBA coming out at that point. Blizzard made their own MOBA, Heroes of the Storm, which is my personal favorite one. Um, Dota 2, which I know Dota already existed, but, you know, the resurrection is what caused it. Uh, The big big influx of popularity caused it. However, lesser known ones. DC had their own. Infinite Crisis. You wouldn't know about it because it died very quickly. I'm not even certain it made it out of beta. If it did, it was very briefly out of beta. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Marvel's got one coming out. Okay. A Marvel MOBA. Um, there are MOBAs all around you. Are any of them as successful as League of Legends? No, because that's how innovators happen. Would you think would... about World of Warcraft? EverQuest, well, you know, really Ultima Online before mm-hmm. it, and then EverQuest, World of Warcraft boomed the MMO market. Mm-hmm. Suddenly everyone else made an MMO. And again, none of them were nearly successful as World of Warcraft, right. but they tried. They tried. I cut some you will, off some will give, them money for the, well, give them money for their money. Uh, I just, you said League of Legends, nothing's going to be as popular as League of Legends for MOBAs, but what about Overwatch? I mean, technically speaking, Overwatch is a MOBA. It is. It's first person, but that is a MOBA. You see what I have to deal with sometimes. <laughs> it is! It is not a MOBA. That is if a anything... mix of a MOBA and first person shooters, but I think... No, Team Fortress, it, it's a, it's most compared to Team Fortress 2, an objective-based team shooter. Okay. Yeah, okay, it is. I, I still think it's a MOBA. This guy... But I, what I'm getting at with that is like that blend is I think that's where we're going to see it is I don't think we're going to see an oversaturated market with just Battle Royales as Battle Royales like a PUBG or Fortnite. Fortnite completely changes the game with the building mechanic, right? Changes and makes itself completely different. Um, but I think that we're going to see these, these, these mixes and matches of things right. that are going to open it up. So we know Call of Duty, Battlefield Five are going to be FPS Battle Royales, um, which I think... I think that's the other thing is I really prefer FPS over third person. I'm not a huge fan of over the shoulder. Sure, I can um, see that. I, as I say that, I play Warframe as well, which is all over the shoulder while parkouring around, but that's completely different. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I like I said, I think I think we're going to see a blend. We're going to see a meld. Um, I don't know that the market's going to get oversaturated to the point where it dies out. I know that's been some talk online. People are like, well, the market's going to get oversaturated, and eventually... It'll we'll, just bottom out. It'll just bottom out, yeah, no. and we'll stop with Battle Royals. I don't think so. I don't think we're going to see them disappear. I think we're going to see them integrated. Um, there's going to be, like I said, a few independent studios, but I think we're going to just kind of start integrating them into our normal gameplay lives, and then you could choose it if you like it, and if you don't, you don't have to play it. Well, that's kind of my big point here is a lot of these comments obviously center down the idea that a lot of you as viewers are annoyed at all these mo- uh, Battle Royales appearing. I hate to break this to you if you don't want to accept it, because this is, this is good news. You really should accept. They're healthy for the market. Mm-hmm. I mean, esports is taking off because of Fortnite. That $100 million prize pool, that's a huge chunk of money. That's another thing forwarding the fact at this point that there is a lucrative career in gaming. Um, you may not like the concept of the Battle Royale, just like people may not like the concept of the MOBA or the concept of the competitive first-person shooter, but you kind of, as, as gamers, you have to embrace all of this. And in fact, I don't, I can't say that PUBG is my favorite game in the world. I can't even say that I want to binge on Fortnite the same way I do on Heroes of the Storm. 
but it already it, it'll breed new ideas too. As as a person who loves Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, um, most of Dragon Ball Super. In fact, that's that's actually a good point. Is I ranted to Aaron that I really hate that whole tournament of power um, arc in Dragon Ball Super. However, holy crap, what a battle royale game based on that be incredible. Oh, I'd, man. I'd play it. I'd I would definitely, it. I would definitely play a Dragon Ball Battle Royale. You better believe it. it. That's what I'm talking about, though. So, I, I think there, it's so healthy for the market to get these new ideas. Yes, when everybody's got one, it doesn't seem like a new idea anymore. But they really are new ideas. Right. It's, it's, I, I welcome our Battle Royale overlords. And I welcome them enthusiastically. Well, you know, and here's the other thing, right? As streamers, as content creators, right. I hate to say it. The more branches of things there are out there, the easier it is for the rest of us to get audiences, right? Because guess what? Then we're not all oversaturated. Not everyone's just doing Call of Duty and that's it. Right. That's the only thing being streamed is Call of Duty. Do you know how hard it is to get grow an audience if everyone's doing one thing? It's whoever was at the beginning of the curve. Absolutely. You know, this, this allows for people who are newer, like Valley Studios Gaming and stuff, to kind of start growing. Um, and to kind of reach its head out and say, hey, we're here too. And while we don't do PUBG, we do Rainbow Six Siege. And we do, um, what was the other one they're playing? Far Cry 5 is the one of the latest streams right. that they did. You know, so it's just, new. the more and more we have opens up the vast opportunity for things for us, not only to enjoy as gamers to play, but as gamers to watch. Um, I don't know about you guys, but like a lot of times I turn on... Um, ESL, and while I'm at work, and just kind of have it playing as background noise, or go to right. YouTube and watch streamers, and just have it playing as background noise while I'm working. Absolutely. You know, so I mean, it's. I think I think it's a great thing that we have it. While I might not be a big fan of Fortnite, I appreciate what Fortnite did for the market. Absolutely. I, and it did. It changed the market with Battle Royale. And the market will change again someday. Mm -hmm. We'll get a new concept that's so trend that just clicks so well that you'll see a billion of those pop up. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I, I don't want to say it this way, but retro is almost a certain aspect to a degree like that. All these games that are brand new games suddenly looking like they have Super Nintendo graphics. I realize that's more indicative of one and two and three person teams can actually build games like that faster than 3D ones. But you, you have to suddenly notice, oh, that was another genre I meant and I forgot. The roguelike. Mm. Roguelike started popping up everywhere because they were successful. Yeah. Well, and you, see, you talk about, um, obviously, I think, obviously, the way graphics look and stuff, these retro graphics, they're a high-def retro graphic, but sure. they're a retro graphic, but it also speaks to the market, right? Those are the games we grew up with. Oh, they're so they're so beautiful. Right? You Again, can't... I talked about Mega Man 11. It's something I'm excited for, because I grew up on Mega Man. Well, so, and it looks like it. it I'm with you right there. So, we, we all have our niches, mm -hmm. and, uh, again, I think this is just something that, um, I'm not really telling you, I'm not really trying to tell you how to think here. But if you've been in that crowd that's like, oh, Battle Royales are dumb and I hope they go away, I really think you need to appreciate uh, what they bring to the market right now. And honestly, if you like shooting at all, I think it's free to play. Actually, it's not. It's You have to pay for the single player um, story mode campaign. The Battle Royale mode is free. So for if Fortnite. You, for Fortnite. But if you, if you, you it's free. Download it. Give it a couple plays. Mm -hmm. You may find yourself like I was, thinking it was a really, really lame concept that you became quickly addicted to. Right. Um, but, you know... Even if you don't like Battle Royales, or if you do, honestly, I want to hear your thoughts. If you don't like them, I want to know why. I'm right. really curious. Like, why don't you like Battle Royales? Why won't you accept them as a trend? And as always, I mean, do you think we're completely off when we talk about this is what we think of the future? Right. If you think we're off, please tell us why you think we're off, and then we will dismiss you as incorrect. Absolutely. All complaints will be forwarded to Aaron's inbox. It's... He'll get back to you within 24 hours, I promise. You have my guarantee that Aaron will personally field all of your questions. And Zach's guarantee is worth $400 money back from him if I don't follow through. So, you'll be disappointed with that check. <laughs> don't cash it too soon. Wait till we're multimillionaires. <laughs> oh, my God. So, anyways, yeah, I mean, but like I said, yeah, let, 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 leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about um, the future of, almost said MOBAs, the future of Battle I did Royale. Too a times. Um, so, let us know what you think about the future of Battle Royales. Uh, do you like them? Do you play them? What's your favorite? Um, what do you think about the new ones coming out? Are you excited about them? Um, if you are, which one are you looking forward to the most? You know, we always love interacting with you guys. It it, it makes me feel alive. You know what else really makes does. me feel alive? If you give us some of those likes and some of those responses on Facebook, on YouTube, be sure to um, visit our Patreon page. Tell yes. me more about the Patreon page. Yeah, so the Patreon page, of course, you can become a member of our exclusive community for just $1 a month. 
Um, so, and basically what that'll get you is early access to every video. Uh, once we get a more established team, you'll get behind the scenes photos and videos as well. Um, that's for five and $10. And then of course we have a $20 branch, which gets you access to a very special never released, um, video where right. we did a, um, a review of Avengers Infinity reviews War. Reviews of Avenger Infinity War before Zack had a body. You don't that's, have a body. That's not as weird as it sounds. Okay, yeah, it is a <laughs> It's very weird. But um anyway, so make sure you, yeah, so make sure you head head over to our Patreon page. We appreciate it. Uh we also are growing our channel a little bit more. So um we are now going to be stream Valley Studios Gaming will now be streaming twice a week twice on a week. Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, Fridays, again, usually going to be hosted by either Alex Min, Steven Rosales, um, or both. Sometimes they're both doing streams. Uh, sometimes they're playing together. Sometimes we'll have a stream of Siege and Far Cry 5 going on. And on Tuesdays, that will be dedicated. Um, we can't talk too much about it right now just because we're still working on the deals with a group. Um, but it'll be dedicated specifically to, to that game. That you have forgotten? No, I'm trying to remember if I could say it. I, I think I could say it. So Tuesdays will be dedicated to Warframe, um, but we're working with a group right. to hopefully uh, help in, endorse with giveaways and stuff. And giveaways will be specific to our patrons. And you're going to love them, I promise. Yes. So make sure you're heading over there. And of course, as soon as we can release more details on that, we certainly will. We're very excited about, about working with them. This is a huge development for us. It really is to have um, some sponsorship behind us other than my mother-in-law. Designs by Diane. Make sure. <laughs> uh, so make sure make sure you're checking it out. I need a big ad rolling across the front. <laughs> just just every time I mention uh -huh. it, a little scroll bar. Designs by Diane. Um, but again, so make sure you're checking that stuff out. Leave the likes, the subscribes, leave your comments, and yeah, join us again next week. Uh, Absolutely. Next week, I believe, will be a normal one, and then the following week, I believe, you're by yourself. Yes. So because Aaron's ditching me. That's true. I'm going to St. Louis. I'm going to have a vacation with Rachel, and it's going to be lovely. And we'll be without Aaron for a week, so it's kind of a vacation for us, too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Love you all. <laughs>